What is up, people? Welcome to Unit 4. Now, some of you probably thought when you began Econ that it was all about money, which it isn't. But Unit 4 is all about the financial sector, so this one's for you. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe while the music plays. Alright, so in this unit, we're going to discuss various types of financial assets. Money, how money gets created, the price of money, and the market for money. Yeah, there's a market for money. So let's start with financial assets and with the fundamentals of the financial markets. Let's begin with money. For now, when I say money, I'm referring to cash and to money in your checking account at the bank, which we call demand deposits, because, well, you can walk into a bank at any time and demand to receive your money. Good? Demand deposits. Okay, so why do people want money? What are the pros and cons of having money? Well, the answer to the first question is obvious and is really important later in this unit. People demand money so that they can buy stuff. The biggest pro to having money, then, is that you can easily spend that money and get something else that you want, whether it's a bag of chips, a day of skiing under gorgeous blue skies, or some shiny new Bitcoin. So let's put a vocab word to this. What I'm describing is liquidity, which refers to how quickly a financial asset can be converted to cash. Since money includes cash and bank deposits that you can spend using your debit card, money is the most liquid financial asset that there is. Other financial assets aren't as liquid. For example, money in a savings account is pretty liquid, but you have to transfer it into your checking account before you can spend it. So it's highly liquid, but not as liquid as cash. Now, many banks offer time deposits, which are called Certificates of Deposit, or CDs, which require the depositor to agree to not withdraw their money for a period of time, usually at least six months, making it less liquid. This raises a good question. Why would somebody decide to do that? And the answer involves another of our fundamentals, rate of return. The rate of return is the net gain or loss on an asset. The main drawback to holding all of your wealth as cash is that the rate of return is zero. You don't earn any interest for the money that's sitting in your pocket. Similarly, the money in a savings account is very liquid, but typically offers an extremely low rate of return. Time deposits offer a little higher rate of return in exchange for less liquidity. And along this same line, we can say that the opportunity cost of holding money is the interest that could have been earned from holding other financial assets, such as bonds. One of the main ideas in economics is that there's always trade-offs. Holding cash is nice because we can spend it, but the opportunity cost, the next best option, what we're giving up, is the ability to earn interest on our assets. Look for this idea to come back in a major way later in this unit. A house is also a financial asset and is much less liquid than the other assets we've been talking about, but also likely has the highest rate of return. This illustrates an important idea that liquidity and rate of return are often inversely or negatively related. Another factor to consider when deciding what financial assets to hold is risk. Risk refers to the chance that the outcome of an investment could be lower than expected, or may even be a loss. Now, everybody has a different risk tolerance. Some people are very risk averse, while others are natural gamblers. But what we're focusing on is the relationship between risk and rate of return. These two variables are typically positively related. The higher the risk, the higher the potential return. This is pretty intuitive. Imagine that I wanted to convince you to risk all of your life savings. And for the sake of this, let's pretend that you're a little bit older and that you've worked hard to accumulate those savings over many years. If I offered you a 10% chance of earning a whopping 1% reward, would you be tempted? Nah, that's easy, hard pass. But instead, imagine I was offering you a 5% chance to be a billionaire. Well, now I might have your attention. We're typically willing to take on more risk when there's a larger reward dangling out in front of us. Other financial assets include stocks and bonds. Stocks refer to shares of ownership in a company and typically are riskier and therefore offer a higher rate of return than bonds, which are an interest-bearing asset in which a person lends money to a company or to a government. These are typically less risky and therefore offer lower rate of returns than stocks. Speaking of bonds, I'm about to say a random sentence that isn't going to sound very important, so I'm telling you right now that it is. The price of previously issued bonds and interest rates on bonds are inversely related. Later in this unit, we're going to focus a lot on interest rates, 
And so for whatever reason, College Board loves to ask questions about what will happen to interest rates and bond prices. And there's your answer. Whatever happens to interest rates, the opposite will happen to bond prices. For those very inquisitive types among you, always thirsting for knowledge, I know you want to know why. The basic explanation is this. The way a person makes money on a bond is by the interest rate they receive. So let's say that in 2022, you bought a 10-year bond that pays 4% interest. And now in 2023, the interest rate being offered on bonds falls to 2%. Well, now that bond you're holding from 2022 is more desirable. Investors would rather have your 4% bond than the new 2% bond, and as a result, they will bid up the price of the old bonds. That's the idea. I've never really seen the AP exam expect you to understand it, but there it is. All right, so I think that's probably enough of that. So until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And check out the description for a link to the answers to the practice questions on the screen, as well as the unit notes and a great review book that I've written for you. And I will see you in the next video.